Hello again, I'm Grant Abbott from Gabbett Media, and today I'm going to be talking about the Still Lion project that I'm doing at the moment, and I've created a new scene, so I'm going to talk through that and how I've integrated the lion once again into the footage in the background. So you can see what I've done here, and the sort of final finished piece. It's only a short clip of three seconds, but hopefully you can get the idea of what I've done. So let's start in Blender. I've animated a run cycle, which you can see here. It is a bit rough, and I am still working on my animation techniques. It still feels a little stiff in places, but I think it just about works in the scene. The way I did this, I took keyframes and made some keyframes, and I just took them straight from a reference image. As you can see up here, I got a lion reference image. I got a few, in fact, of different cats running as well. I just copied those crucial frames as I saw them across there. And once I had those, it still looked very stiff, even stiffer than it does at the moment. Then I started to put these sort of in-between frames in just to tidy it up. Still looking at the reference images at times, but sort of ad-libbing and, and doing a bit of sort of creativity as well to make my rig work as best I could. I'm not particularly happy with my bone structure. I think it's overly complicated at the front here. It doesn't need to be. And when you overcomplicate things, it just gives you more things to key and therefore more keyframes to edit and it makes it more tricky. Keeping it simple seems to be the most important thing, but knowing when to add that complexity, that's the sign of a true master, I think, which I certainly am not at the moment. And I think that's where I'm missing. There's these sort of final frames that I seem to be missing and not quite getting right, so the movement still looks very stiff and not very weighty. You can see some issues in the rig as well, in the skinning, I think I'm just about getting away with it at the moment. I'm hoping that it's not going to cause too big an issue in the long run. But I could have done with doing a better skinning job in reality. But it's just about working. So that's the run cycle of the lion. Now what I've actually done is taken that then into After Effects. It's a little bit easier in After Effects. You can do all this in Blender. It's just the slower process and the render times will be much longer. So in many ways, this is just video footage layered on top of each other. So After Effects is a better tool for that in reality, in my opinion. So I'll go through each of the layers. So first of all, there's the background forest. I'll just take you through what I did with that in Photoshop. So I started with the basic image just here. I had to sort of stretch it because there was some camera distortion just from the angle of the footage. So it was nice and flat and the trees were going straight up in the air. And then I duplicated those trees, as you can see here, into a huge long strip. So this is at 6%, so it's very big. This is like 4K in here, so it's a long piece of loads of footage. And then it's a case of taking this into After Effects. You could do this into Blender, and then just dragging it across from one side to the other. So let's say the camera starts at one end, and we drag this across so the camera ends up here. It looks like the background's moving. So if I go back into After Effects, you can see just that. That is literally the picture just being dragged across and animated. Now you can see there's some motion blur in there as well. So I just added an effect in here of motion blur and that blurs it sideways. So it looks like there's blur sideways. So that was the first layer. The second layer is the lion. So you can see the lion coming in there. And so we've got this animated lion now. But obviously he doesn't integrate particularly well at the moment. So I put some foreground trees. There's only a few of them, but you can see them just sort of going past in the foreground there. And that adds an element of realism. You can see how I've done that in Photoshop here. So they're just trees that I cut out and added a motion blur to. And I did a very quick cutout because the motion blur blurs all the edges anyway. So I've got those foreground trees, but he still looks like he's floating. And that's when I added some grass in the foreground there. Similar sort of approach with the motion blur, and he sort of hides behind the foliage. That was fairly straightforward as well. So there's my grass layer, and you can see the different grass assets that I've got here. I just pasted them all in, and then added a motion blur, and then repeated them, which you can see there. I did do a bit of color matching as well to make sure they matched up which is fairly straightforward in Photoshop. You can go up to Image, Adjustments, and then Match Color, which is quite a handy tool. It didn't do a great job, to be honest, but it did an okay job in this case. And I'm trying to be fairly quick so I can get through all the work that I need to do. So that's all okay. It runs pretty well, as you can see there. Now, what else I've put in 
is a lens flare and I've animated that going from one side of the screen to the other so it looks like it's bursting through the trees. So you can slowly see that it comes across in the background just up there and it adds some interest and a bit of vibrancy to the frame. The last thing, I've got an overlay layer, which you can see there, it sort of blows out, it's a light leak overlay. They're kind of interesting they are, and it's well worth having a look at. So here's an overlay, and you take out all the black, and you're left with this sort of colorful overlay, as you can see here, and I've used the blues, and I combine them with the lens flare, and they sort of blow out the frame a little bit. And you can see I've used a blend mode of screen, so that takes out all the black, leaves the white colors, and then you can see the effect of that just here, sort of blowing out the frame and making the lens flare look a touch more realistic or maybe just more interesting, really. And if I click on a frame, you can see the effect of that just there. So that's a lens flare with an overlay of a light leak. And that gives us this final animation. So I'm fairly pleased because that was a fairly quick process, this one. And I'm kind of getting used to the integrating 3D into real footage or faking it anyway but I still certainly need a lot of work on animation, which is why I'm looking forward to the animation event, so I can practice my animation and chat to other people in the community. So that will of course be in May. I have sent this to the client, but it's gone a little bit quiet. Hopefully the contract still exists, but I'm having quite a lot of fun with it, so I'm not too worried really. The project for me has never been about the money or the final piece. It's more about just having fun and learning things. So if you've got any thoughts or comments, then please do comment below. I do appreciate the constructive criticism as well, and it is very helpful. And thanks for all your comments so far, it's really appreciated. So hopefully you're still getting something from this, and I'll see you next time.